Jen, thanks so much for being here. We're really excited about the new book. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what inspired you to write this book in the first place? Oh my God, you're going right for it. You don't want to know my favorite color. You don't no, want to. No, oh not God. at all. <laughs> okay. Um, I, by the way, it's so funny. We were like, we should bring a book out, and we did. And there's and like. Here, <laughs> But this one's the real thing. Okay. Uh, uh, the, why did I write this book? Is yeah, that the op that's your opener? You, yeah. Oh, God. I so, know. you know, listen, um, I've been training for a while. I've done sports for a long time. And then I started to learn about kind of the application of fitness to people's lives and in in beyond just a performance way. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately what started to happen is I, you know, I'm training clients. I'm working on Biggest Loser. And... I just started to see the same information kind of being regurgitated in a lot of the wellness books or information or blogs. And I thought, well, we all obviously know that protein's important. Drink water, get your vegetables in, make your plate colorful. And, you know, fats are okay. Now you're going through all these things, but why are we still struggling with weight loss? Why do we still have this growing obesity epidemic? Why are people's New Year's resolutions falling off? And like, I think this is the week where everyone's quitting. Yep. And I thought, you know what? It's not, <laughs> you're laughing because you, did, you, did you quit? Okay. I will talk after, we're gonna work on it. But what occurred to me is it's not the information that's out there, it's the application of it. It's, it's the coaching behind it. And I, I always think about the analogy of, look at a teacher um, in front of a classroom of students. You know, if you have someone that's a really great reader or someone that struggles with reading, if you're someone that's a great communicator or struggles with it, you have to teach them differently. And just like diet and nutrition and movement, you've got to include the reader in the programming. How could I program for you without actually having you in mind. Mm -hmm. And that's what I started to do. And this book is a decade of essentially just r research and evidence of what I've seen through whether it's working out in the kitchen. And I always joke with the, the contestants, I had like kind of 24 hour surveillance with them. I could see when I said something, who followed through, who sustained, who struggled and said, I ain't gonna do that, Jen. And I said, okay. Because the best coach to me is about being there and helping that one person succeed, no matter the personality. So that's what's in the book. Yeah. So Whew. personality type is a totally different approach. I've never seen this before. Yeah. So what did you? What made you decide that this was the thing that would really help? Because it's the only thing that works. Period. Okay. I, I, I'm I'm sick of seeing people have some success in weight loss or in results, wherever your journey is, and then they're not sustainable. And it's because you trying to fit into a box that I put you in is not gonna be livable, it's not gonna be sustainable, there's no joy there, there's no life there, there's no way for you to thrive in who you are. And we know those, those I, should, I call them behavior defaults, what you're gonna go to is gonna be stronger than anything else I can give you to fit here. Mm -hmm. And what I want for people is that sustainable light weight loss and that's what this book does. It offers you finally the opportunity to lose the weight and keep it off. So let's talk a little bit about the personality okay. types in Woo. the book. Yeah, can you kind of go through a little bit about each one? Yeah, I'll give you some teasers. So essentially, I started kind of pinning five core personality types. And I'm just going to kind of rattle them off, give you a little bit about, about each one. And and I, I hope that you guys in the room and you guys at home are going to kind of nod and smile like, oh, my God, that's so me. Because mm -hmm. that's what I want. The whole point of this book is to, A, identify and level up your awareness and then celebrate it. I don't want you to be like me. I just want you to be you. So the first is an organized doer. The, the, their, their description is in their title. Someone that's organized, self-motivated, thrives on routine. The only thing they like more than making lists is probably crossing. Uh, are you a checker? I'm a checker. It's just, it's like, ugh. <laughs> Sometimes I'll put, like, I'm a, I'm a part or an organized doer. Uh, I, I put, like, drink water on my list or fresh teeth. Or, yeah. I'm like, oop, just cross it, cross it, cross it. <laughs> um, but what they struggle with, though, is celebrating successes. And sometimes that's why they end up burning out too quickly and don't actually get to their goal. Then we have a swinger. A swinger is someone that's a very adventurous, loves experiencing life through food, through friends. They're the open the pantry. It's like, but what do I feel like eating? Right? Someone that kind of decides as they go uh, based on what they're feeling. But they also struggle with getting bored. And that's why in any kind of nutrition plan or uh, workout regimen, if it starts to lose, or I should say lack variety, they start to check out. And then they get to that place where it's like, well, nothing works for me. I'm like, well, you quit before it actually can work. Yeah. So it's keeping them consistent and accountable is key for the swinger. I've got an everyday hero. These are your service people. These are your parents. These are your police officers, your nurses. You know, These are the people that put themselves last on their list. Mm -hmm. They 
they have such a maxed out daily schedule that if they're not preparing at the beginning of the day and having that snack stash and um, actually being as good a friend to themselves as they are to everybody else, they're going to struggle with, succeed, uh, with succeeding. And then uh, I've got two more. I've got a never ever. You guys are my negotiators. Inventive, emotional, but often emotional, uh, sorry, inventive and emotional against yourself. You talk yourself out of a lot of healthy choices, and there's a negotiation of, well, I had a light lunch, so I get a bigger dinner, or um, uh, I, you know, I worked out yesterday, so I don't have to work out till Monday. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a negotiation process happening, but they also get stuck, and so that's why um, creating sometimes those, that bigger, the overarching goal of, we're going to try to improve the energy. That's more interesting to them than improving their mile time because they could just give a shit about that, to yeah. be honest. And then finally, you've got your rebels. Your rebels, I have a lot of rebels in my life. They are chaotic. Uh, tornadoes, unpredictable, but effective. They somehow, um, they, they, you know, they might not get a brush through their hair that day or get their shoes tied, <laughs> but they can get their job done. They are very live in the moment, free form, f I'll figure it out. But because of that, they end up kind of missing meals. They don't pay attention to hunger cues. They have really no concept of portion. And so they kind of, I mean, I mean uh, by the way, you're going to, anybody, if you know these people in your life, they're like your favorite people. Like even like when I go to the nail salon with my best friend who's a rebel, like the nail salon lady loves her. Just because she's like, how are you? Like, beautiful. What's this? You know, <laughs> just very open and lovely and free spirited. Yeah. So that's them. Cool. Did I give you too much? No, I love Whew. it. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure novel. It is. Right? But the thing is, it's like you get to just actually choose yourself. <laughs> you know? So are you guys finding yourselves in some of these things? Yeah. Yeah. If, if no, say yes. Okay. So regardless of personality type, what are some key strategies that you think um, really work for everyone with regards to healthy eating? Yeah, I want to uh, thank you for giving me a chance to kind of speak mm -hmm. on that because this book is a breakdown of those personalities, but there's also core information in there that no matter what your personality type, it's really important that you know. It's kind of my yeah. stake in the ground. If I'm going to make you focus on a few key things, these are the key things I want you to focus on. Uh, a great one is um, don't be afraid of a calorie. Uh, a lot of times what I see is people undernourishing their bodies, not eating enough. Now, obviously, overeating is something that's easy to spot, and people are like, oh, that might be me, but most mm -hmm. people I talk to aren't eating enough. And that's because I think they have a misconception of what a calorie is mm -hmm. or does. A calorie is a unit of me measurement. It's simply fuel in your gas tank. It's something that allows you to be your person in your day, in your job, going out to a party. If you don't put fuel in the tank, you're not able to live, survive, run, be happy. I mean, like, if I don't eat, I was getting hangry. Oh, my goodness. I mean, you saw me back there. It gets dangerous, okay, with me. So <laughs> calories are good. Uh, another great one, going to that baseline nourishment point of view, is that a lot of people ask me, what's the best exercise to do to lose weight? What do I do? What's out of the gates? What's your best, like, your, mm -hmm. your, your go-to? And honestly, I don't even go to movement right away. I look at the baseline three. So it's rest, hydration and food. Mm -hmm. So if you're not, if you're doing great with getting hydrated and getting a lot of food in, like getting the, the calories in, but you're not sleeping enough, your body's going to be in stress mode, fight or flight, and it's going to hold on to fat. If you're sleeping well, hydrate, you know, or getting, getting food in, but you're not hydrating, same thing. Your body actually is like, oh, well, she's not going to give us water. And actually water, one of the main responsibilities of water is body temperature regulation. Mm -hmm. So your body's thinking, okay, well, she's not going to give me water. Oh, screw Jen. All right, I'm going to start to hoard fat so I can actually regulate the body and take care of it. And your body's just being smarter than you. It's just looking out for you. But if you give it enough water, if you give it consistent sleep and food, I'd rather actually, as long as the, the nutri, um, nutrient timing, even if it's not the perfect meal, I'd rather have you have something every couple hours because then your body's mm -hmm. saying, okay, cool. She's going to feed me so I can burn what she's actually giving me. Mm -hmm. And what I often see is people going from a dinner at 630 or, you know, 7 at night. It's a common time. We don't eat before bed. We wake up at 6. Now it's maybe been about 12 hours without food, okay? Oh, I'm not really a breakfast person. I'm going to grab a coffee. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. So we're going to dehydrate you more and not give you any nourishment. And maybe you're going to have lunch. I mean, let's do math. Are we close to 15, 16, 17 hours without food? Yeah. And your body is... Is, is, is hating you for it. And by the way, now I'm not burning what you give it because it doesn't know when you're going to feed it again. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now I'm yelling at you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously weight loss, it, diet's a huge component, but it's also about exercise. So how does your personality come to play with choosing a workout that really fits for you too? Yeah, I do actually address it in the book. And to me, movement is medicine. That's actually a, a part of one of the chapters that I talk about. Mm -hmm. I always joke that if I'm... 
no, I'm going to work out later, I'm probably not going to have a burrito before, right? Like, I end up eating better because I'm moving, and I'm probably not going to have a burrito right after because I'm like, I just did that. I'm not going to mm -hmm. erase it because I got lazy with food. So there's a nice built-in accountability. But based on your personality, uh, for instance, the organized doer, the routine, they want the same time each day. They're going to pick the 7 a.m. or the 8 a.m. or whatever that time slot for their schedule and hit it probably with the same teacher, probably the same class because they know it. They can count on it. They know their route to and from home. That's where I'm going. Whereas the swingers I talked about, if I made them do that, they'd last two days <laughs> because day three, they're like, I'm kind of bored of that running class. Totally. Want to get coffee instead? <laughs> and that's what will happen. And so for them, I want them going to maybe that 8 a.m. running class and the next day, do try a, BM, a p.m. like box and flow mm -hmm. or and changing it up. For them, I just want everybody moving. As far as the actual, like a lunge works on everybody's butt. Like do lunges, okay? But what I care about, again, is getting you to do it. So swinger needs variety. You know, organized doer, for instance, needs that structure. And it's all broken down into the book. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest people that, the, one of the biggest things people struggle with uh, for diet and exercise is motivation. So where does your motivation come from? And where do you find that on the days that you're really struggling? This is so personal. Uh, <laughs> you know what it is? I, I'm just kind of a crab ass. I, 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 I have found that when it comes to movement, I'm kind of a dangerous neighborhood up here if I'm not moving my body. I love lifting weights. I love like a barbell as my therapist. There's something that helps me get out of my head mm -hmm. when I'm moving. And what I find is when I move, like I said, with the burrito thing, I end up eating better. And I just find that if I'm not eating very well and I'm not moving and sweating, and by the way, I like working out with people that I like to be around, so then I'm kind of cutting off. I start isolating. So now I went from this joyful, happy person that's like flexing my cam my pictures back there <laughs> to anxious um, you know when you're like you're harsh with your Uber driver, you're like oh, what, uh, Waze says right here, and I'm like I'm, I'm finding my I'm ruder to people, I'm sharper, I'm not as confident, my eye contact isn't as good, I'm not wearing clothes that I feel good in, mm -hmm. I'm not feeling you know I'm not gonna be talking to a guy, you know I, it affects me directly with who I am, and so for me I move because. And that's what it is. I'm like, well, do you want to be a crab today? Mm -hmm. Or do you want to be this bright, beautiful, strong woman? Yeah, I'll take that one. And that's what gets me through the door. And honestly, sometimes getting me through the door, I, I call it like let yourself off the hook. So uh, let's say I'm going to a CrossFit workout, and I, I, and I'm, I don't want to work out. I know I want to be this, this strong woman. And I'm like, oh, but it's just so hard today, and I'm tired, and it's snowing, and it, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm late to class or whatever. You know, all these things start to rack up in my brain. I'm like, okay, if there's, if there's burpees, you can just go slow. Um, if, the, you, if, the, if there's weight, you can go as light as you want to go. You can take as many breaks as you need. If, I'm, in, I'm in Los Angeles, so we're usually running outside. If, you, if there's running, you get to walk. And I literally, I just, eh, Jen, take it off. Just let yourself off the hook. And I take the pressure off my performance. That strategy is great. Oh, my God. And then I actually go, and then I don't really end up walking. And then yeah. someone's, like, moving a barbell with me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm doing the weight. She's doing the weight. Totally. I'm going to do the weight. Yeah. You know, and so I kind of come to life. It's just getting in the door that I think is the hardest part for people. Yeah. Yeah. So that the mental component of exercise is actually something that you've been exploring in your new column with Shape Magazine, Mind Before Body. Thank you for pointing that out. Which we're really out. excited about. I'm a um, columnist, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so one of the things you recently addressed is the importance of sharing your goals with others. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think so many people internalize those things. You know, it might be, I want to lose 10 pounds, but, you know, their partner or their friend doesn't know that about it's them. It's part of my personality type as well. Like, I, I, when, I, when I did my assessment, I'm actually a dominant everyday hero with the recessive organized doer. And that organized doer in me tends to isolate. It's kind of like... Um, and, and, and I think regardless of personality, accountability works stronger for some than others. But if I say it to you, it makes it real. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I don't want her to know that I'm scared of running, right? Yeah. And, but that's what I did. And, and having people know about what goals I had, one particular I pointed out in the article was actually, I had this weird phobia of running outdoors. I have no idea where it came from. I was afraid, like, 
I, I was afraid that I wasn't able to make it home or something. Like I wouldn't have the energy, <laughs> which is so weird. Cause even if it was for, I, I could go to a track park and knowing I could see where my car was. I'm like, I, I could walk that far. I know I can get to my car. I've got my key right here, whatever. But it was a weird phobia. And so I let a couple of people in on the goal. And so when there was running on it, I, I would give myself the, you can walk if you need to. Mm -hmm. But people were like, Hey, we'll go, we'll just go slow with you and we'll kind of stay with you. And I found this huge amount of support from people that I, it's not that I didn't even expect because I think um, the community people I have are pretty good people yeah. and nice, but it was like, I didn't realize how much of a difference it would make for me. I'm like, I'm good, I'm fine, I got this, I don't need help, I'm, I can handle this on my own, I'll worry about my own goals. I couldn't have gotten there without the support of others. And I think by sharing, like I said, it makes it real mm -hmm. and it also makes you face the fear. Because a lot of the other personality, the never ever, it, it, they kind of have this feeling that if I didn't, if I don't really try, I can't really fail. So let's just skip it. Let's not have the goal. Let's just kind of detach and avoid it. But by telling someone, mm -hmm. they help you, they mitigate the fear around sharing it and trying it and facing it. And, and that's what ultimately we have to do in order to hit the goal or break past those barriers. And by the way, I mean, working out's fine. Like, I, I, you know, losing weight's important because I want people healthy. But it's such a great tool for the world out there. If you can use working out and those kitchen workouts to, to build some confidence, to mm -hmm. go for things that, that make you nervous, that scare you a little bit, prepares you for the world out there. And our world's kind of chaotic right now. I mean, we have half the country celebrating, half of it sad, half, part of it protesting. Mm -hmm. And the thought of you know, wanting to make a difference and do something, it has to start with you. Because if you're not taking care of yourself, you're not going to be good to anybody beyond the doors of your house. And that's what the other thing here. It's like, if you really lean into you, you can make greater differences that you want out there. So true. Yeah. I think we're going to open it up to some audience questions oh, now. You guys want to talk too? Yeah. Hi, Jen. Um, you talked a lot about like calorie intake and like making sure you eat the day. So I want to know what's your thought on superfoods and if they were like actually affect your diet. Well, I think what happens a lot in our time now, because we have such a growing population that the um, the, the the soil is kind of depleted, and trying, getting very nutrient dense foods are important. So when you look at your superfoods, I think of almonds. You know, it's a superfood in my mind because it has protein, it has really important fat, and it has fiber. And like anytime you can get your hands on something like that, like it, it's it's literally life changing because it's going to change your decisions before and after those meals. Algae is another one. Okay, so when I look at superfoods, and they're all, by the way, they're throughout my entire book, I think they're critical because they you know what they will make a difference. And it's it goes into the way your body absorbs, digests, and elevates your whole health overall. But it, you'll also feel a difference up here. Did I answer your question? What's your favorite superfood? You like nuts. Yeah. Does it, which one scares you the most? Like, how do I, oh, how could I get that in? Like, I don't love peanuts. Like, they're just kind of like there. Wait, you just said you like nuts. Well, no, and like now you said you don't like peanuts. Walnuts, but peanuts are just kind of like there. <laughs> okay, you don't have to eat peanuts. Stick with almonds. <laughs> Next question. Hey, Jen. Uh, thanks for braving out this storm. I know it's been most of a workout for most of us. So, um, I've, <laughs> I know that you were on The Biggest Loser. Uh, I was just I've lost a lot of weight. <laughs> 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 Sorry, keep going. Uh, now, I wanted to ask you, uh, how much of, like, how did it impact you when you were on that show, like, getting to see all those people trying to lose all that weight? Um, a lot of pressure. I, I remember my first season, my hair started to go gray, and I was, like, losing hair. I didn't realize the stress it would take on me. Um, these people count on me. They leave their families, they leave their homes, they leave their jobs, and they're there at that ranch, whether it's the one week or the 18 weeks that we're filming. And it's, they're my responsibility. So it really, it really elevated my game. And what was interesting, what changed me the most in the show was I know, like, I know my stuff. I know how to train people. I know, nobody coaches better than me. I, that's why I wrote the book. It's more coaching than it is what you're actually doing because that's everything. It's getting people to do it, and I'm really good at that, and I got them to succeed, and I was so dialed in, and I was so committed. What I didn't expect is how much they took care of me in return. My contestants would write me letters each week. I'm running out the door. They're like, no, 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 did you eat? 
eat the, come on, we cooked an extra plate for you. They would include me in their breakfast and dinners. They would sit down and say, well, how are you? And how are you holding up? The people on those, on my seasons, whether they were on my team or not, they were really there for me. And it became such a great family and community because they realized I was totally invested. And because of that vulnerability, they invested back in me and that changed everything for me. But it was really neat because of that show. Like I said, I kind of get them that 24 hour surveillance. I really got to see the way it worked and how it affects people not just on the outside, because like that's that's like the easy part in my mind, up here, you know. So, next question. Hey oh. Jen, how you Hi. doing? Hi. Uh, I have a, 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 a diet question. It's kind of like cliche, but uh, when you go into a supermarket, we all know like the healthy food is extremely expensive, but the food that's pretty much garbage is real cheap. But a lot of people that's frugal, they they tend to buy the you know the fast food. So what? What kind of rights can you get them for that? It's really a misconception, I think. I think because what often happens, okay, so let's say you do like a, like a Lunchable. That's pretty cheap and quick, right? Are you not going to be hungry in like 22 minutes? Hello. So then you're buying another one and another one. What you end up doing if you spend a little more money, which... I think if you look at the facts, it's not that much more expensive. Mm -hmm. Even today, I just I cooked a, a dish on the chew, and it literally you got chicken, you got tomato, a little quinoa. I think I put cumin in there, black beans. Now I've got healthy starches. I've got fiber. I've got protein. Two chicken breasts. I mean, and that's going to be multiple meals. That's actually going to sustain you. That's not going to have you going back to your supermarket market or back through a drive-through, getting more because you're actually putting satiating food in you. That's going to work for your system. So I think the hardest part's not the financial. The hardest part is making the switch over and trusting that you can do it. It's that's what it is. And we have time for one more question. Hi, Jen. Hi. Um, so I guess to kind of piggyback off of that question, um, I'm someone who doesn't like to go to the gym. I don't really like to kind of, kind of make that effort. I'm a dancer. I just kind of do other things. But like, nice. What's the like one of the biggest kind of mistakes people make in their fitness? Like, is, like I know a lot of people just like to do cardio and think that's just enough. But like, what are some other things that? Oh kind of God, I have like five things to tell you. Okay, uh, don't do what you don't like. Like straight up. Like if you don't like weights. Don't do it. I don't like running, so I really don't do it. Because I go and I, I'm like tying my shoes. I'm like, I don't want to do it. I hate it. Don't do it. Don't do what you don't like. People talk about, oh, I gotta, it's first thing in the morning. I got to do it. The best time to work out is when you'll actually do it, right? So the, I cannot recommend stay with the joy. Stay with that stuff. If you don't like working out, you could walk for the 20 minutes after your lunch, and that's better than you trying to force yourself to go lift weights to the gym because I know that's something you actually might do. I can see you putting headphones on and strutting your music. That would be better for you than something else, okay? The other component, though, the overall, a really good tip, don't take on too much too fast. Often what I see people do is they kind of shoot for the fences, swing for the fences. I'm going to do all these things, and here's my week, and da-da-da-da-da, and then they burn out because it's really hard to create that kind of behavior change so suddenly. And then what happens is then you feel that shame because you're like, oh, and I failed again. It's like, no, you didn't fail. I just don't think you set yourself up properly. So start smaller and build versus taking everything on and then feeling like you've got to scale back and that. Uh, for anybody, you're going to scale back and think, oh, I couldn't handle it. I wasn't strong enough. I didn't have the willpower. It's like, no, there's a system of behavior change that needs to be in place. And that's something to be ashamed about. It's a real scientific process, also in my book, that it's normal and it's okay. Just l build up. Yeah? Cool. What do you dance to? Uh, I do ballroom. Ooh, shit. Awesome. What's your favorite? Um, I do a lot of jive. Ch I would not have picked you for jive. <laughs> Did anybody else pick it for drive? Yeah. Okay. No. Dude, you're such a swinger. I got, I, we should, you got to take this quiz when you're done. Okay. Love it. All right, sorry. Back on track. <laughs> Thanks so much for being here today, Jen. Um, her book, Die Right for Your Personality Type, is out now. Go buy it. Please. Yes, it's on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. It's everywhere. You can, on social media, I'm so in your face about everything right now as far as where you can find the book, but it's at Jen Wiederstrom on all my platforms. Uh, if you like it, share it with somebody. Talk to somebody about it. This book is so much more about leaning into who you are and being the greatest asset in your life versus just weight loss. It's there. You use this book. You follow your personality type. You will lose weight. You will see results. But this is so much more about being the strongest, best you out there. So I encourage you to please lean in and give it to someone that you think can use that. Then use the support. Awesome. Thanks, Jen. Yay.